And so I like to be, uh, I like to be, uh, virtual. And, uh, like many of you, um, I'm working in different places. The, the world has changed and it's going to continue to change with everything going on. So, uh, and I see a number of you on the uh, webinar that I've worked with already. And so, you know, a little bit about the value of what we can provide, but, uh, I want to just kind of give you an overview of what we're going to be covering here. Um, we're talking about the intros right now, then we'll move on. I'll be talking about Office 365 and how you can use that to collaborate internally. Um, as John mentioned, uh, one of the great tools that you can use is uh, Microsoft Teams. Um, but more than that, there's so much more to Office 365 that's really being power packed into that monthly subscription to give you a lot of opportunity to save time and effort when working virtually and collaborating. And one of the key focuses will be, of course, Microsoft Teams. Uh, John is gonna uh, give us some specific examples in action. Um, and then uh, he'll talk a little bit about G Suite collaboration. And uh, John and I will tag team on talking about webinars. I do, uh, in an average uh, business day, I'll do about 10 to 12 webinars. Many of those are one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, and then I do a lot of group webinars, too, so I've got a lot of uh, expertise in that. Look forward to sharing that with you. Um, and uh, John and his team do a ton of uh, webinars as well. Um, and then we'll talk about video sharing services. There's a great service that we've started using here at Turner Time called Dub. Uh, and there's a number of other ones that can provide you tremendous benefit. And as we know, video is the bomb. That's what people are really focused on. And we'll show you some great tools for that. We'll talk a little bit about the, uh, John talk a little bit about the uh, Rep Fabric training resources and we'll finish up with a little bit more about what I do specifically and how I might be able to help your organization. Uh, Turner Time has been around now since 2006 uh, and was founded based upon uh, the, the uh, eight or nine uh, rep groups that I hired uh, for the company I was with previously, Clover. And uh, I had about 86 reps that worked with me across the US and Canada. And that's why I have a, such an affinity for rep firms, because I know what a great job you folks do and what some of the challenges are in managing multiple lines, multiple relationships. And so I have a lot of affinity for, for providing assistance in that regard. So if you do have questions you would like to chat us, please go ahead and hit the chat window down there. I'm going to go ahead and just say hi to everybody right now uh, in the chat window. And if you have anything you want to ask specifically, uh, it might be easier to uh, just go ahead and chat that up with me or John in the lower uh, right corner of your go to meeting window, normally on the right side of the screen. And uh, if anyone wants to go ahead and just reply back there while I take a swig of Coke, that'd be great to say hi in the chat window. And uh, we'll go ahead and get started. All right, hey Brian. Okay, so um, that being said, uh, what I'd like to do is kind of talk conceptually Hi, Barbara. Before we get started and how we organize the product universe, if you will, all the different services and things that are going on, these are um, some of the things that I've, uh, I've kind of culled from the last uh, 15 years or so in working with rep firms. And uh, whether you use Gmail, please don't be offended if you see Outlook on here or Microsoft Office 365. Uh, we work with both uh, G Suite as well as uh, as well as Office 365, both John and I. But if you will just conceptually with me, consider that there's really seven primary silos or pillars of productivity where we need to create only one place to go. So we have, you know, the place calendar, that's your electronic calendar. And uh, for you Teams user, your Outlook calendar actually ties into uh, Teams. You've got email, that would either be Gmail or Outlook for managing all your email. And typically, as we know, email's always been the dumping ground, right, for all information. And now we're kind of parsing that out. Rep Fabric for your CRM, uh, notes through OneNote or Google Keep for all your uh, business-related notes. If you're looking for a way to incorporate uh, handwritten notes, great tool uh, called White Lines, which enables you to scan pages right into OneNote. Um, a great tool to do that so you can have one holistic system for your notes. Tasks with Google Pass or Microsoft To Do and Planner, which is part of uh, Microsoft Teams. Whoops, backed up there real quick. Uh, file sharing through OneDrive and SharePoint. Uh, that would be a co opposed to Google Drive. Um, and then teamwork through Microsoft Teams. And uh, there's some other features in the G Suite. They don't have a direct competitor. Uh, to Teams, but they have a number of other things in general, 
be diving into those. So concept here with this page is just talking about being organized for you and your salespeople and your inside people, that everybody's on the same page and organizing one place to go for these different sets of information. So as I said, if you have any questions, feel free to chat us up. Be happy to answer them as we're going through the presentation. Okay, and, and really tying back into that is, is the Microsoft Teams concept. So best way to look at Teams is sort of a viewer um, to bring all your information together into one place. So collaboration is the key for this new millennium, especially right now when we're not gonna be able to see people in person in many cases, um, might not even be able to exchange phone calls with them. So the fact that you can bring through Teams all these different vehicles, whether it be um, whether it be you bringing into the uh, fold um, PowerPoint and collaborating on a PowerPoint with one of your manufacturers or principals, or the contract via um, OneDrive or uh, through uh, through Word, all these different vehicles are viewed through Microsoft Teams, and Teams gives you the ability to have one place to go, one stop shop for all your information about a manufacturer or a specific project, specific customer, and um, that's a great way to bring it all into one place. And one of those great aspects is OneNote for taking notes. So Kenny just asked as a question, which you recommend for tablets, rep fabric related? OneNotes or white lines? Well, uh, Kenny, OneNote is, uh, is the tool, uh, and white lines is sort of the accessory for handwritten notes. So you want it, you'd wanna go ahead and use um, OneNote, that would be the best app to use for your note taking, or some people use Evernote or Google Keep, but kind of in staying that sort of that sweet theme uh, for Office 365, it would be OneNote, and then White Lines would give you the ability to incorporate the paper notes. So hopefully that answers your question, Kenny. Um, and uh, yeah, I just got a question, John, uh, if we could get a copy of this information out after the session, I'm sure that won't be a problem, correct? Yep, okay, good. I didn't hear you, by the way, I think you're on mute, but um, okay, so yeah, great questions, but keep those questions coming. Excellent, Kenny. So think of, people are always saying, hey, where's this information? Is it is it in Teams? Teams is merely the thing that brings all the information together into one place, but all those things are still separate. Excel, OneNote, PowerPoint, Outlook, those are all still separate, but Teams is sort of that major viewer um, and bringing it all in one place. So with that being said, we'll continue on. So like I said, the hub for all information related to specific projects, customers, manufacturers, imagine a world where you can collaborate through one place. And you know, I went ahead and uh, I do the CPMR training every year. Some of you might have partook in that um, this past year in uh, Austin, Texas at the AT&T Educational Center. And uh, we talked about teams in that uh, meeting uh, in that training, and I got a, a in my doing my follow up calls with people, got a real interesting comment. Somebody said, Hey, Steve, we went ahead and implemented Teams based upon what you said. And I was actually uh, in the field at a customer location and was able to use the Teams app on my phone to go ahead and contact my customer service people and, and exchange the information I needed without having to interrupt my conversation with my client. And so that's the kind of thing that Teams gives you the ability to do is have a hub to go. So the nice thing about that chat is that if that chat was done in the conversations of Teams, then that would be accessible to everybody else on your team in your company. So instead of sending all these emails back and forth, sending information, oh yeah, here's what happened, let me send you the email, it's all in Teams, giving you one collaboration point. And that's the beauty of Teams or G Suite is starting to bring all these things together in one place. So you can also use it to communicate uh, via um, webinar. So if you're not using Teams already, we're gonna talk a little bit about that uh, when John gets into the more of the collaboration features, but Teams is a great way to bring everything together into one zone and do all your communication, your webinars, your uh, video conferencing, uh, into one vehicle, that's what Teams can do. Any questions or comments on that? Anybody using Teams? Let's go ahead and ask that question here in the uh, chat window. Anyone uh, using Teams already? 
uh, and what uh, and give me some idea on what uh, what you think of it. I see Kara, you're using it. What do you, any comments on that? It's great. I'm getting a number of it's greats. Works well. Just starting, okay? Excellent. Yeah, I know uh, Kim, uh, Kim and the folks over at Arco Sales. Uh, we set that up for you some time ago. I know you've been using it for a while. And uh, we set up all the manufacturers and have a team for each manufacturer, uh, giving you one place to go for all that information. So, uh, John, maybe while we're kind of going through this, you can go through the chat, see if you see anything that's, uh, we should, uh, we should bring up here or, or discuss in future, um, as far as that goes. Acknowledged. Okay. So, um, yep. so are we ready to launch into a little bit more, uh, of the show and tell and how it, how it connects things and then kind of get into the, the, uh, Google equivalents of that? Are we ready? To yes. Over? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So yeah. So we're we're now going to go into some specific teams examples. I'll turn it over to you, John. Maybe okay. you can give us some a couple specific examples. You bet. You bet. So so for the folks on Google, we'll we'll talk about that in just a minute too. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Because uh, I can figure out where the toolbar went. Okay, so the the first thing in in Teams is that for the folks that are already on Microsoft, uh, the Microsoft platform and Office 365 specifically, they already have or you already have access to this information. So um, where you get that is if you go to your portal.office.com, because uh, we got various folks with various uh, knowledge of the Microsoft platform. Uh, but first thing is you go to portal.office.com and you sign in with your work email address and your, uh, your Microsoft password. And what happens is it'll take you to a landing page where you see here, here are all the different applications that are available to you. One of these applications is Teams. By clicking on Teams, this will take you into the web portal version of Teams. And then you have the option and it will prompt you to download the Teams application that works for your desktop. So just like there's the Outlook for the web portal, there's also the, the Teams, uh, you know, and then you've got your Outlook desktop that actually lives on your laptop or computer. You've also got Teams that has the equivalent type of functionality. So what I'm going to show you today here in Teams is actually one of those systems that that is uh, that particular um, desktop application of Teams. So this is as if I've downloaded it. And what happens is when you first get brought into the Teams, it'll workflow you to create Teams and create channels. And, and let's kind of talk a little bit about what that is. So uh, on the left-hand side, what you'll see are your activity feeds, and that's all the stuff that's happening. You'll see chats where you've got chats that have started with individual people on your team. So these are chats that um, might be one on one with just a specific individual in your organization. It might be, you know, a group of people that always focus on the same thing. And so the, the intent, though, is it's, that's really the internal focused users of, of, of teams that are in your company. Uh, the next thing you'll see is actually teams themselves. And this is where you can architect your uh, channels that you use for all kinds of different things. So what we've done is we've created an HR channel. And way people use this today is, for instance, they can uh, broadcast, you know, hey, I've got, I've got to pick my kids up at school. I'm going to be out of the office for the next hour. Uh, very easy to do that. And you simply just go in and you start a new conversation, something like I'm out of the office for the next few hours. And that broadcasts to everybody who's a member of that team. And so this is the chat feature that goes <laughs> call out specific at Bill Murray, could you cover cover the phones for me? As soon as I can type. <clears throat> And that will really pop up on Bill's screen in his activity to say, hey, you've been called out on that. So this is kind of the chat window client. And that's that's the easiest part that goes with that. So this is broadcasting to everybody on HR, which would typically be all members of your company, for example. 
Um, now, we're gonna go through the process of creating a team. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new team. And from a, a rep perspective or from a product line, product management perspective, these teams can be very useful um, for, for doing things about a specific manufacturer. <clears throat> for example, I'm gonna, I'm gonna create a team um, that is going to build a team from scratch. I want anybody on the team available to it. So you also have the option to make them private as if uh, you're, um, you know, you might have management conversations, let's say. But in this case, I'm a rep and I rep Acme Explosives. And what I'm doing now is I'm saying, okay, here's Acme Explosives. This is about all things for this particular manufacturer. And I create a team that um, has now been added and this <laughs> folks on my you know within my company to the team itself um, so this and is where I add these these folks along the way and um, and I'm wondering if uh, then you can set them as you know what else can they do with it and now you've added them along the way so this creates Acme Explosives General and this is where I could say hey we need to prepare a presentation um, so I say at channel, prepare a monthly report in Ref Fabric, for example, and that will be broadcast to everybody who's a member of this team. In addition to that, you can you can add more what they call channels to the team. So this is the general channel, and then more channels could be things that are specific to uh, urgent, let's say, like an urgent channel, or um, here's a new, you know new products channel within Acme Explosives, for example. Uh, or you can do it at an even higher level if you want to broadcast all of that out to everybody. And this is generally what we see is, is folks using uh, the individual team. So imagine if you had a world where each principal had their own uh, individual channel, team. new things that get published and posted to be added to that channel. The second part to that is that in addition to having the, the general chat features, you can also host meetings so that you can, for instance, use that chat feature and call several people on the team. So I can go back to chat on Bill Murray and I can physically dial him via video or webinar, uh, dial him up and bring him into the meeting. So this is me calling Bill Murray as kind of like in the old sense of Skype, if any of you are familiar with it. And when Bill picks up the phone, you can have a video conversation, uh, which we'll talk a little bit more in the, in, in the future about the video side of this in the, in the near future in this meeting. But what this does is this ultimately gives you direct contact with Bill and or several folks on the team. So one of the things that we do at Rep Fabric is we have a support team channel here so we have a team called support and daily i mean literally daily for several hours a day we host we host a meeting where we all dial in and we kind of put ourselves on mute but we sit there and work on different support issues uh, that come across the wire and anybody who's got questions can unmute themselves and say hey guys have you ever seen you know have you ever seen this happen what's the fix for that um and so from a, you know, because we're in this new COVID-19 world, uh, if it's good for a couple of reasons. One is you get the same sense of the water cooler talk when you have one of these hosted meetings that people can just kind of come in and come out. It gives you a sense of, of the, the normal camaraderie you might feel at an office, as well as the, um, you know, the productivity gains of just not having, you know, all these extra tasks and extra clicks that go along with it. Um, so. So having the team's piece of that and then hosting live calls that are just static calls that you, you, uh, you know, are huddle calls in the morning, for example, just pulling everybody in uh, is, is something that Teams is very, very good at. You can do the same thing in Google Hangouts, which we'll talk about in just a minute. Before we go there, though, the other part of Teams is kind of what Steve was talking about, which was that in addition to just the general chats and the ability to call people, there's a lot of other stuff that Microsoft has really front-ended with Teams. And, and what I mean by that is um, you, can, you can get files here, for example, and drop files into HR. So if you have an HR policy book, for example, um, you can go over to the files now and in doing so drop some files into 
what is known as the company's SharePoint. So I've already dropped a file into here called Line. <laughs> be a pit you know this doesn't really make sense in the HR channel something's going on with Acme explosives because I've deleted it or not but here's here's how it works is um, this is actually this file is connected to the shared drive of your company and that is really the SharePoint drive of your company so so these file systems are where you can share group files and even operate on group files so for instance if this was in a line pitch because we're interviewing for a new line in two weeks and we want to get our, our pitch packed together uh, for that line interview, what we can do is we can create a team channel for that line and then everybody can get into this PowerPoint and open up the PowerPoint and do their operations on it and add slides and so on and so forth. So it's truly collaborative and it's operating right inside of Teams. And, and the power to this is that the Teams the changes that you make to the PowerPoint here get surfaced everywhere else. So as I drag and drop files, uh, you know, I'm doing all my normal PowerPoint tasks right in here. Other folks on the team can see exactly that same uh, information essentially in real time. And, um, you know, they kind of they kind of block it and lock it so that only one person can change specific pieces at the same time um, or specific slides, for example. But you can do this for a lot of things. You can do this for Excel sheets. Uh, you can do this for, um, you know, Word docs and so on and so forth. So it's it's helpful because everybody knows where the latest is and it's all in one place. What I also wanted to show you that, that goes with that is this uh, this other piece here, which is how how that interconnection happens. So when I look at, um, for instance, when I look at HR General, what I see here is my company SharePoint of HR General and this is actually synchronizing to my phone so the team's channel the team's channel that you create here that has the file to it can be synced to your local PC here okay so this is your your company wide SharePoint and this each channel so if I had an Acme explosives channel I could go to this channel and I think there's there's of course something wrong with it here um, but let's go take a look and see if it fixed itself. Um, what I can do is I can use this new channel and synchronize it locally with the files to my own uh, local hard drive. So when I do this, it says, hey, I'm getting the sync ready. And now it's going to synchronize to the SharePoint site. The SharePoint site is, is, think of it as like a OneDrive for your company. So OneDrive for you is personal, meaning it's your OneDrive, it's your stuff, it's not normally shared by everybody. Whereas on the, on the SharePoint site, that's the corporate big brother to a OneDrive. And that's where by design, folks, members, and of course there's visibility settings and things. So um, what I would expect to see here in the mo moment is that Acme Explosives now is surfaced as uh, the, you know, the information inside of Teams. And if I have any information that I want to drag and drop into it, I can do that. And now that information is going to be surfaced right in here. So it's a good way to take your active files that you're going to be collaborating on and put them in one spot. And then you as an individual have the ability to bring it in copies of that as well now it's hey not John, I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt but is it possible to mute everybody we're getting a lot of, lot of yeah, well, let me distracting let me, noise yeah. um, thank you thank you just bear with me one second i figure out how to Um, okay, so the next piece of this, so this is the file share side of it, and, um, and, and just so you guys know from a Rep Fabric perspective, what we're working on is being able to surface these same files inside of Acme Explosive, Explosives Attachments tab uh, inside of Rep Fabric, so that it really becomes one coherent ecosystem of all the documents that you want to uh, have available to you for a specific line. Uh, and 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 you know 
use that essentially to uh, um, just kind of be your regular go-to uh, one location, whether it's through Rep Fabric, whether it's through Teams, whether it's through SharePoint or your own local OneDrives, you get all of that information that goes with it. Um, another example of collaboration within Teams is not just the posts, which are your chats, not just the files, which we've just talked about, but also your wiki. And what a, what a wiki is, if you're familiar with it, is really just stuff about this particular channel that you might find use, useful. So for example, um, it might be things like, uh, uh, I can add a, a new page and just call it logins because maybe I have a manufacturer that has specialized systems like a quoting system. So I might say uh, quoting system here. And when I go into that, what happens is I can say, um, within the quoting system, I can say, here's the link to the quoting system so that you know me or anybody else in the company who might need that link can jump into this and, and And, and basically use that link and even publish things like your passwords and, and login IDs and so on and so forth so that folks that might need to get in there can just go ahead and go do that. And so you can build up all kinds of different subject matter uh, about that. Like for instance, another example could be, let me add another channel called Price Too High and you guys can consistently, you know, similar to what you would do in the activity journal, you could similarly have a blog in here that just says, hey, this this line, we keep seeing this this challenge of the pricing being too high. Um, you know, you just have that channel where you put in that information. But the wiki especially can be useful because this is where you can store that regular go-to information and surface it for everybody that's involved. Um, now beyond that, there's there's a lot of extensions that you can add to here. So there's all kinds of tabs. You can put in a Power BI health meter uh, that you connect to your Power BI uh, Pro license that pulls the data from Rep Fabric, for example, that would uh, surface the health of Acme explosives and what all you've been doing them with them for a dashboard actually within Teams. Obviously, you can have OneNote forms and, and things like that posting as well. So there's a lot of extra stuff that you can add into that. And Teams, again, is think of it like the kind of the front end where everything ties together. And underneath that, you have all these different uh, pieces and channels that go with that. Uh, last but not least, when you have calendar meetings, these are surfaced right here. You can do things like, hey, meet now, and this is where you would create a new meeting or a future meeting. Uh, so this is reading right off of your Outlook calendar. This also uh, can be used, in, and we'll talk about this a little bit more in just a minute, but uh, we find this to be mainly useful for a lot of internal meetings. And the meeting invites we found have not been very well uh, accepted or attended to by our outbound uh, customers, meaning that when we send this to somebody who's outside of the Rep Fabric organization, they often have time trouble signing in. And it's certainly if they're not Teams members already or use Teams regularly, um, they struggle with getting logged into the webinar that we're about to host. I will also say that within the last uh, week or so, Teams, you know, they're, they're surpassing 40 million users now uh, in Microsoft. And we've definitely seen a little bit of a degradation in the service. Um, you know, there's more screen lag behind it when we use Teams for our own presentations uh, than historic than has historically been there. Uh, and you know, there's there's a few other things that I think they're just absorbing the impacts of this kind of new reality that we're all in. Um, next thing I'd like to do is just talk about calls. So your Outlook contacts that you have in your Outlook that sync from Rep Fabric also surface within here. So uh, like you used to be able to do with the old Skype, you can actually make phone calls right out of Teams here and, uh, and actually call Abby, who's someone at one of my customers, if you have the calling plan. Uh, we have the calling plan. It's got things like call cues that go with it. Uh, to be honest, it's not as sophisticated and, and frankly as reliable yet as a Ring Central or another VOIP system, um, but its integration features are generally pretty nice. Uh, 50 bucks a month is, is really what you would pay for uh, the, the outbound ability to call 
uh, and you know any any U.S. or North American numbers. Um, and you know, again, it's it's in its infancy. Hopefully, you, they'll be making it better. It's not as good as a lot of the pro VOIP systems that are already out there, um, but it is effective enough. Uh, also, with that, you get your history of calls, your voicemails, and so on. And a lot of this stuff, again, like we'll be doing for Google as well, uh, we'll be integrating into Rep Fabric and integrating into the uh, um, the back end reporting uh, of Rep Fabric, so that as you uh, have contact phone call history things like that you'll be able to see that though you know you called that guy on tuesday uh, and didn't get a hold of him so so that piece will be coming in uh last but not least uh, again these are recent files so you can hook up other cloud storage google drives drop boxes if you guys use a uh, dropbox you can hook up um, all different types of cloud storage to this and still get into your files and then there's another ecosystem of uh even things like call shift planning uh, you know, for, for employee attendance, for example, uh, stream, which is an internal broadcasting for very big companies, probably not some we would use yet because it's not external facing, but this is where you have a live event. Think of it as like Apple launching the iPhone. That's kind of what stream does. Uh, one note, definitely, you know, a, a big winner from the Microsoft suite. And you guys are probably a lot of you are using that today. Uh, so, so that's, that's really the overview of Teams. And Steve, I don't know if you have anything you'd like to add. I think I may have put you on mute. I'm, I'm unsure if you can unmute yourself or not. Um, let me just take a look here. So that is the the. Can overview. you hear me? Okay. Yep, we can hear you. Yep. Yeah. So let me just mention a couple things. Uh, great summary, John. And as uh, as you know, uh, John and I are. We kind of we we want to show you these tools, but we have to use them live for our businesses, so it's really real world. So appreciate you asking questions here. I want to answer a couple of those real quick uh, between John and I. But one of the things I want to mention is that uh, if you're going to go live with uh, Teams and start uh, engaging your customers uh, and prospects with it, then you're going to want to make sure you get the audio conferencing feature added on. That's separate than from what John's talking about is the actual outbound calling plan. Um, and th this feature is only about $5 a month, and it just gives you the ability to have in your actual uh, invite a dial-in number. Because you know not everybody's going to be in front of their computer or smartphone, so you want to give everybody the most flexibility just like they would have if you used a free conference call or a go-to-meeting. So it's called the Microsoft Teams audio conferencing feature. You want to make sure you have that activated before you start uh, providing uh, webinar-based or conference call-based services uh, using Teams. Any questions on that? Okay, and John, if I may, there's just a couple quick questions in here I thought I might answer real quick if we could. Um, and so Brian, uh, Brian with um, uh, Allied, great to, great to hear from you. Brian asked, uh, in Teams, can multiple people work on the same document at the same time? Absolutely, that's one of the greatest things about this. Um, is the ability to collaborate live with documents and even chat up uh, individually. So you don't even need to do a webinar anymore if you want to work on a document together. Just go ahead and share that document through Teams, and then you can have everybody editing and working on that document simultaneously and chatting up with uh, the chatting feature as well. So definitely can do that. Um, Connor uh, McCoy was asking, is there... Um, what are the difference between Slack and Teams? So yeah, so if you're a G Suite user, you might find Slack as the as the vehicle for you. Um, and uh, Slack is very similar to Teams. Obviously, Teams was necessitated uh, by the creation of Slack. Um, and uh, the point is there, I think the difference is, in my opinion, having used both products, is that Teams is more tightly integrated with the, the uh, Office Suite and is gonna provide you a better and more robust, easier to use interface over the long term because Microsoft is constantly tweaking the recipe, if you will, and making it better. Um, and so that's probably the simplest way I can say that. Um, just other couple quick questions. Um, John, or Tom uh, Hayward, hi Tom. John on the chat, how, do you, uh, how does that work for road warriors that are not a computer accessible by the cell? That's where you'd want to get that the chat app for your phone or the Teams app for your phone. It works extremely well. Gives you the same basic feature set. 
Um, and I would strongly encourage that when you're implementing Office 365, uh, for all our customers, we sent out an apps email that includes all the links to the Android or iPhone uh, versions of all the apps in the Office 365 suite, and Teams would obviously be part of that. So that being said, I'll go back to you, John. Yeah, and I was just going to demo the the example of that live chat here in Teams. This is basically where in Teams you've got a mobile app, or it's a Teams app. It doesn't run inside of the Outlook piece. It's its own separate app. But down at the bottom, you've got similar to the right side toolbar. Here's my Teams, Acme Explosives, HR, et cetera, et cetera. Put all that in there. And then you have the individual uh, chats that can be post, you know, posted with it. Get access to your file systems. Get access to the wiki that has those uh, you know, system passwords and general information about that. So it's all surfaced right in one spot, too. Um, and then, uh, you know, if you do have those phone plans, this is where you can, you know, use the call dialer, do that, uh, see the reflection of your Outlook calendar uh, right on, on your calendar here. And then the activity piece of it is just all the stuff that's changing across all of those different channels. And you can see all the recent updates that anybody on your team has been doing. So it's very effective. And as Steve pointed out earlier, um, you know, it's, it's handy for quick little chats while you're on the road because it is surfaced on your road. And quite honestly, we do our Red Fabric morning huddle meetings through Teams. And um, many of us will be driving to the office as of, you know, three weeks ago when we all drove to the office um, and, and during that time. So it does make the time productive. And it's a webinar that's live through your data plan. Uh, so you can actually, you know, you shouldn't be doing this while you're driving, but <laughs> but you can actually see <laughs> talk to you stuff as you go along right on your phone. So it's pretty effective if you have a, a you know, a decent size uh, phone screen. Um, OK, so I think what we're going to do is we're going to move on to just briefly the Google piece of it. And then the final conversation points that we're going to go through are some of our findings for different webinar systems that we've used in the past and, and the likes and dislikes about them. Uh, some of the pricing that goes along with them, and then some of the tips and tricks of selling via video. Uh, so we're gonna we're gonna cut through this. We're we're running a little long on Teams, um, but let's talk about the Google platform. So just you know, just to kind of give everybody a taste, it's very very similar in that it's got things where hey, I can add new Hangouts, I can add new groups, I can have chats just like I would uh, through a Teams, for example. And I can do things with dialers. This syncs up again your Ref Fabric app or your Ref Fabric contacts sync up to your Google contacts, which then are then surfaced in Google Hangouts where you can make phone calls, uh, edit the contact, send emails, schedule events, and so on. So they're they're building in a good amount of of, of what I would call team competitor. Uh, Slack also is is kind of the original that started a lot of this chatting on different channels. Um, and, and so Google and Slack have some really deep and really good integrations as well. But you can see here, you know, Google Hangouts is really kind of the framework of where they'll go with Teams. What you can do within Hangouts is similar. Let me manage my contact list. Let me manage individual conversations I have with people. Um, let me make phone calls. Let me do invites. What I would say is um, also that from a screen sharing perspective, Google offers a... Um, uh, I'm not sure I can get to it because I got a go to meeting thing in the way here, but uh, they offer what's called Google Meet, and it's kind of Hangouts with video. Uh, it's very very easy to use from a webinar service, and it's very easy for people to use who are not part of your organization. Uh, as I mentioned before, getting folks to log into Teams can be a little bit challenging if they don't have the desktop apps of Teams installed already. Now, hopefully, most of your customers will, but um, if not, I mean, I, we, I think we found that, that Google is far easier for having people to, to sign into it. Um, you know, in addition to that, you've also got all of, of the rest of the Google suite with Drive. You'll notice that Drive isn't directly tied into Hangouts, uh, unfortunately, so it doesn't have that same amount of integration uh, that Teams has. But you can, you know, this is your normal Google set if you're a Google person, and that's what you're using. Um, so so kind of with that, I know it's three minutes of Google, and I apologize if you're a Google user, um, but at this point, Steve, I'm gonna hand back the controls to you, and let's talk about some of the other services that we use. Sure, thanks, John. Uh, I've been at, while John's been doing that, I've been uh, just answering a few uh, questions, so please check your chat uh, 
and you'll see some answers to that. So um, different webinar vehicles that you can use. Um, and, uh, you know, as John mentioned, um, you know, kind of the some of the ins and outs of a few of these. Um, I do I use GoToMeeting uh, extensively, but I'm in the process of moving to Teams. Steve, can you share your screen? Yeah, can you share your screen? Yeah, yeah, I missed that. Yep, there we go. Okay. You good? Yep, got it. Yep. Okay, got it. Okay, let's get over it there. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so as John mentioned, um, just a, just a, there's a world of opportunity here, and uh, consider me uh, and John at your disposal. I'm going to offer everybody uh, the ability to set up a complimentary 15-minute consultation if you'd like to talk about some of these topics we've been covering on this webinar. So consider me a resource uh, doing as many of these as I do every day. But uh, the point is there's a lot of great features out there to be uh, more communicative. Uh, Zoom uh, has limitations. I was asked a question in chat about Teams. Is there, a, is there a time limit? I think Zoom times out after 40, but uh, no, there's no time limit in Teams. Teams is part of the basic feature set of Office 365, and um, it's not an issue to, uh, to go as long as you want. Uh, just had a question here from Stephanie said, um, let's see what that said here down here. Um, Stephanie asked, um, uh, about uh, one of the features here in Teams, it looks like. Uh, let's see, I can't get to the bottom of that here. Here we go. Uh, if a session is full, can we log in using a coworker's login info? Um, I don't know why a session would be full, uh, or unless she's talking about our session, John. But I think I don't think we're at the limit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, I'm not yeah. sure what you mean by that. But, yeah. Pick that out. Um, yeah. Okay. All right. So let's keep going. So, yeah, okay. We'll, so um, we'll move on to the um, the different actually, services, the uh, video services, John. Actually, let's go back to the webinar stuff because I want to explain what we found. You know, this has been sure. for learnings where we've we were looking at it and we've conducted close to three thousand webinars, um, whether the you know ranging from um, sales efforts to uh, customer support to um, you know, individual sessions like these. And this is kind of what we found, because these are the different systems that we've tried as far as webinar services. So just like we talked about um, Microsoft Teams, let's talk about what goes across the top here. So obviously we name the service and then what we say, and, and Steve, would you mind maximizing this? It's a little bit tiny on the, uh, on the screen here. Um, yeah, so uh, basically, how easy is it for customers to sign on? That's the first column. And that's really important because, you know, various folks have various skill sets and, and some are not that great at your customers for being able to even get into a webinar meeting. Um, so some, some webinar systems have enough of an installed base that they already exist on a lot of your customers' systems. And uh, that external customer sign on, you really don't want to wait 15 minutes while somebody figures out passwords and and dial up numbers and getting their hardware to work and so on and so forth. To be honest, that's probably the single messiest part of Rep Fabric, and I'm sure that throughout the trainings that you guys have experienced, you, you probably run into those problems. So when you select a webinar service, it has to be just brain dead, easy, simple to do. Um, and so when we look down the list, Microsoft Teams, unfortunately, doesn't give you great hooks for that. So if I were to go schedule a team meeting, um, this is what a schedule from a team meeting would, would look like if I were to build it in Microsoft. So if I were to go over, uh, and uh, or I'm sorry, yeah, I, I'm not gonna share my screen, but I'll just talk about it. Essentially the meeting invite that your folks get is very, very primitive and you can't control it when you send an external meeting invite to somebody uh, outside of your organization. And, uh, and because of that, you, you can't brand it, you can't make it easier for them to use, and they're not what we call uh, static rooms, which is the next thing we're gonna talk about. Um, Performance-wise, uh, what we found, again, this is the how well do the webinar systems work. And, and what I mean by that is, you know, where do you get screen delays? Where do you get, uh, you know, calls dropping out or hangups in the system when you're screen sharing? And most of these have parity. We found Teams, again, to be kind of medium medium level, whereas like Google Meeting and Zoom and uh, WebExes and GoToMeetings are, are 
pretty airtight as far as having great performance and not a lot of audio lag uh, or screen lag. Static room, what that is, is you might have a meeting like, you you know, go to meeting.com slash United Sales, right? So Tom, I saw your, your question there, uh, or OT Hall. And that static room is really a, a standard meeting room that's always available that you can jump into anytime with your customers. Uh, so that static room is a pretty important feature. So in Rep Fabric, for example, we have static rooms for, um, you know, uh, introductory training uh, for activity journals, for opportunities, and so on. Uh, that's a very useful feature, and unfortunately, Teams doesn't have it, uh, Google doesn't have it, uh, and Zoom and GoToMeeting and WebEx. I, I think WebEx has has it now, but it's an upgraded plan. Uh, and an Uber conference does have it. So then you see the the expense per user per month, and that kind of gives you sort of a sense of it. These are rough numbers. These would be the plans that are beyond the free plan or the introductory plan, like Zoom, for example, uh, limits you to 40 minutes in their free plan, which typically isn't quite enough for uh, you know a, a real webinar. Uh, with with somebody where you're doing engineering types of discussions and so on, um, and then and then and the last thing is these are our findings for where we use them best. We find that Teams is excellent internally. Um, we find that GoToMeeting is excellent externally, but it's a little bit of a drag to set up for internal meetings. Not impossible, just just a process. Um, Google Meet is uh, very you know it's very good with both. Um, obviously Zoom very good with both and, and you'll see the rest. So that's what we find for our webinar services. This is in no way uh, a, you know, it's no way a, a, a commercial. If you've got other webinar services that you love, uh, you know, we just don't know them. This has just been Rep Fabrics experience with them. And um, this is kind of what we found. So uh, hopefully that offers some, some insight for you guys. And then Steve, if you'd like to go to the next one, I'll introduce this and maybe you can show uh, show how, how you might do something in dub, for example. So this is the, the kind of the new way of selling that we can do while we're stuck in our offices. And what this is, is, is really the ability for you to record uh, screen moments and, and videos that you use almost as your pitch videos that in many cases you can embed in links in an email, for example, and send to somebody. So that if you're going to demonstrate you know a, you know someone on your line card comes out with a really cool product that you want to demonstrate well record that as a video and you can take that video and then use it as your collateral use it where you know as as reps we're people selling to people so use video and when you're you know prospecting someone via email uh, because it it tends to be effective and, and it tends to uh, really kind of establish your identity in that same sense that people buy from people and it's all about the relationships that we've all built our businesses on. And um, so, you know, it feels awkward at first. It definitely is not something you're going to be normally comfortable with. Uh, it will definitely get some great laughs out of, of uh, you know, the folks in your company and, and you as you try to do these for the first times and kind of make it fun to do that. Um, so these are some of the video sharing services that, that we've used and, um, and Steve has used that we find uh, pretty useful and and again just you know recording quick videos whether it's it's an actual video of you or it's a video of a um, you know a product that you're kind of walking through a presentation on go ahead and use those because they're not time specific that way um, so Steve do you want to take us through an example so we can help people visualize the difference between this versus a webinar um, yeah yeah let me go ahead and do that real quick I'm just gonna go in and use uh, uh, dub so the way way you use dub is uh, it's a web-based program so I can go on to my internet uh, and go to my dub.com website and uh, there's an add-in for Google Chrome and Edge uh, and uh, this gives me my dashboard uh, for all my uh, videos that have been produced and how many times they've been viewed and you'll see that number goes up and um, it gives me the ability to also have campaigns. And what's really nice about Dub and some of these other tools is you can track how many views and know when people are viewing and uh, watching uh, watching your video clip. The video clips don't expire unless you set them to expire. So when you share these messages, uh, they're viewable and, and continue to be viewed as many times as you want. So for instance, I sent one out on Microsoft To Do to a client 
and we sent that out. And we had three views for that one specifically. Um, so no matter when you send out, you're going to know how, what type of response you got uh, from the video. So just to do a real quick video to show you actually what it looks like is I'm just going to use my dub extension built into uh, Chrome here. And I'm going to go ahead and you'll see in the lower left corner of my screen. Uh, I'm, I'm going to pop up here as a little message, a little video here. Let's see. Actually, I can't do that because I'm using it through GoToMeeting. So I'm going to turn that off right now. And then you'll be able to see uh, my uh, video show up here. Uh, there you go. Okay, so that's my little video. So now what I can do is I can either do a video of just me or in this case I'm going to record what I'm showing on my screen at the same time. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit the button and say um, Hi folks, uh, this is Steve Turner with uh, I'll start my sharing right now. Hi folks uh, let, let it go ahead and start. It's going to record in one second. This is Steve Turner with Turner Time Management. I wanted to show you a little bit about uh, some of the services we offer at Turner Time. This is just a, a summary of our seven silos or pillars of productivity. Um, please check out this information. Consider the fact that there's ways to be more efficient by creating only one place to go for specific types of information and sharing that across your company and collaborating with both your internal people as well as your external customers and prospects. What a great tool to use, the seven silos. And then what I'll do is I'll go back to my uh, my presentation here. I'll hit stop sharing. And then that will upload that video clip into uh, Dub. And then virtually here in a few seconds, I can then immediately share that club uh, a clip through um, um, things like uh, LinkedIn or through um, any number of uh, social media tools as well as via email, which is one of my favorites. And there's actually an Office 365 add-in. There's also a Gmail add-in as well uh, for sharing that. So let's upload that video. I'm just going to rename this and call this the seven silos. And once I name that, uh, yes, uh, it, Dub can work with Constant Contact. Uh, seven silos. And I'm just going to go ahead and rename that. And then I just go over here and, and go ahead and hit my uh, Share and Send button. And now I get the ability to do direct email, social, embed it on a web page, whatever I like. I'm just going to copy this for email. I'm going to copy it with an image still. Uh, and uh, actually, I'm going to go ahead and drop it right into my Outlook email right from here. And that will open up a new email for me. And there's my link right there. Or I can paste uh, the link as well with the image. There you go. And then I can send this to anybody I like. And once they view it, I'll be notified that they viewed the image. So what is this doing? For, for people now that can't go see clients right now, this gives us a great way to more effectively interact and, as John said, kind of complete the picture of your interactions with your customer and prospects. So a really great tool. There's also the Microsoft add-in for Office 365 for Dub as well, where it will give me access to all the previous videos I've done. So if I have some set templates that I've created for specific manufacturers and products, I can send those out too. So, John, I'll turn it back over to you. Great. Thanks, Steve. So, uh, yep. So, now what I'd like to do is just kind of highlight a few of the things that we've, we've taken uh, from this. And, and honestly, we can't emphasize enough that in this period of time, being able to um, share with yourselves with your clients uh, and, and sort of the best practices of working from home, uh, you know, in order to be able to do that, it is really important for all of us. And and so we put together a little bit of a blog. I'm sure you're getting tons of emails from uh, lots of folks about working from home best practices. These are the best practices that we found uh, just working from home. And many of you already do, so it's not news. But uh, at Ref Fabric, you know, a lot of us have been working from home off and on for, for years. Uh, one is obviously, you know, if you, if you want to check out our, our blog that has this information, the, the essential pieces of it are number one to prepare a space for you where it is your workspace and doesn't necessarily blend with uh, the rest of your family and TVs blaring. A lot of obvious stuff there. Um, and then prepare it so that it is a session that's viewable via video, right? So if you're going to use tools like Dub and Loom and several of the other ones that we've listed there, um, make sure that you've got things like backdrops that look good, your lighting is, is good. 
and so on and so forth. Uh, and, and, you know, using, you know, trade show banners like I've done here with Rep Fabric, you know, ideally, hopefully uh, gives you kind of a more professionalized office type of look, even though that you are uh, working out of your house. Uh, there are a few tools like we've talked about with, uh, for example, Microsoft Teams that allow you to bl blur your background. Uh, so there's special buttons you can push that allow you to blur the background so that you're not showing, you know, all of your uh, family pictures in your office and whatnot, uh, which, you know, is, is up to you if you want to do that. But um, so this blog kind of goes through that. And the other thing I think is really important really is number, you know, number two, get dressed in the morning, wake up, pretend like you're going to the office, shower up, clean up and go. It just puts you in the right headspace um, and then equip well. You know, if you're used to running two or three uh, monitors in your office, make sure you've got those same kind of monitor setups uh, as well at home just to get you comfortable uh, in that space if you're not used to working from home. So what we're going to do with this is uh, we're going to produce this webinar. We're going to produce some of the links on a new blog page that will show you kind of what we've talked about here today and some of the vendors that we've used in the past. Uh, and I'd also encourage you, we've actually got almost 30 hours of trainings being conducted. We did about 26 hours last week. We've got 30 hours this week of training. Uh, this is what we're doing to sort of bolster as much as we can some of the digital skills that you guys have both in rep fabric and, and some of the additional products that complete uh, a digital ecosystem that you guys need for selling so please join us on those trainings simple way to get to it is within your rep fabric system if you go to this tutorials button you can click on the tutorials button go over to the right hand side and click on uh, the search and just type trainings And when you do that, you'll you'll see articles of all the different trainings that we offer that span from um, you know the normal rep fabric type of skill sets to some of the trainings like you're seeing here with Steve and I. Uh, so this training has the full list, the descriptions of those products. We encourage you guys to join us. And once again, you know we're in this together. Uh, we, we we're going to do whatever it takes to um, make you guys as successful as we can during this time. We work for you guys, and we are, uh, I think, all uh, excited to, to put COVID-19 behind us and wish you health and safety, and thanks again for being a Rep Fabric customer. Um, so with that, I think we're there. Steve, do you have any final comments? Oh, Steve, did we lose you? No, John, I uh, just want to say thank you, uh, everybody. And if you are interested in a complimentary session with Turner Time, just go visit our website at www.turnertimemanagement.com. And uh, we'll go ahead and uh, give you a complimentary consultation that's linked to Microsoft Bookings, which is another great part of Office 365 we didn't get a chance to talk about. So I look forward to sharing more with you folks. Thanks again for your time. Thanks, everybody. Have a good one. Be safe and be well. Take care. And go sell something. <laughs> Thank you. Enjoyed it. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thanks, John. Great job. Thanks, Steve. You bet.